record in October. My next guest has a front row seat to that drama. Tracy Casper is president of the National Association of Realtors. This is also her first interview, national interview, since losing that court case over keeping commissions artificially high. Tracy, it's good to have you here. Welcome. Thank you, Kelly. I really appreciate you having me on the show this morning. I was thinking, I mean, you have more drama between what's going on at NAR, what's going on in the housing market, what's going on with commissions. This is like you're like in the middle of a hurricane. So uh, maybe we'll just start with the, the overall housing market. Or do you think this will give realtors a bit of a sigh of relief on what's been a very tough year? With regards to the interest rates, is that the question? Yes, yeah, sorry, with regards to mortgage rates, at least, you know, 6.6%, that's, that's much better. Absolutely. I just heard your, your previous speaker. No, there's no question. So what our buyers, because we do have still such a pent up buyer pool that's just been waiting on the sidelines. The interest rates rose so quickly that it took so many of them out of the market. So we are starting to feel them come back in. They're going to finally start to be successful. The affordability factor, of course, comes into that first and foremost. So we're we're excited about that news. We're tentative about that news, meaning we know that while those buyers are coming in, the other thing we're facing is that we still have a shortage of inventory. We do not have enough houses to ad um, adequately take care of that demand that's out there. So we're watching that. We're going to be talking a lot to our sellers and helping them recognize opportunities in the market. So yeah, things should start be churning again. It's very, very different. I mean, covering the real estate crisis in 06 and everything went up and down at the same time to see a market where the existing market market is frozen, but home builder stocks are at an all-time high is truly bizarre. Just kind of what's your first-hand experience in Boise? I mean, are prices coming down? Is that going to be one lever of normalization here, or, or are they staying high? Well, there's a couple of factors in play, and you touched on both of them. It's interesting because we have such a lack of inventory that the builders are the gap fillers. They're the ones that are being successful in the market right now. They're doing a lot to help incentivize those buyers by offering a rate down by you know, incentives and that sort of thing to help get them in the market. It's that existing inventory that we really are crunched on. So with regards to this market kind of moving and churning, Having that inventory come on, having the, the builders be successful, having the buyers now be successful, we're seeing such a normalization of the market, and it's something that is very welcome, to be honest. We were looking for this kind of uh, normalization maybe in that 2018, 2019. Hmm. We thought 2020 would be that year, and then we have the pandemic. So having those two years of these super sweeping high increasing double digit year over year increases in pricing, that's really what has stymied the market. So yeah. now here we are over the last 18 months and things have normalized. The market has only increased about 4%. Those are the single digit increases we've been waiting for and they're here and we're, we're looking forward to that. That's a good normal market. So let me turn to the, how the, the experience could be changing uh, for people who are buying and selling their homes going forward. I've noticed there's now a lot of other commission lawsuits. There's ones on the West Coast and so forth as this appears to be gaining traction. Um, do you foresee a time in the next year or two where the way we've been doing business and home sales is no longer and buyers are going to have to pay for their own agent and sellers are no longer going to be paying uh, their by the buyer's commission? So it's interesting as we look at this, and I will tell you, first and foremost, I'm a realtor. I work with my buyers and sellers every single day. I'm also a broker owner, so I get to work with my agents and definitely on the forefront. And you mentioned I'm in the Boise, Idaho market. And as I heard that verdict that day, I will tell you my first thought went to my buyers and sellers. So first for the sellers, let's just talk about that. They have had so many options in the market. They've always had options in the market, whether it's a flat fee, an hourly rate, or even a percentage. And as we've talked with them and explained to them how we can help to bring more buyers into the market for them. In other words, as we, as a listing broker, and that model is to share some part of the commission that we've negotiated with our seller to our, the buyer's brokers, that incentivizes those buyers and that gets them to the table so that they have that professional representation and can come into that marketplace. The seller wants that. They want as many buyers as possible. That helps them get the best price for their home. You turn that conversely and look at our buyers. Our buyers are already, for the most part, struggle to come up with a down payment. They're struggling to come up with their closing costs in addition to that. And what we don't want to see is the margin, marginalization of those buyers. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about our first time home buyers, our first generation home buyers, mm -hmm. even our middle and low income buyers. We talk about our veteran buyers. And we cannot disenfranchise them simply because they can't out of pocket pay for professional representation. And then what would happen? Do they come into the market on their own, try to navigate a complex situation with the market, 
complex process of getting from point right. A to point B and actually closing on the home. And then what we also don't want to see, and this would be the tragedy of all of it, is that those buyers just simply don't come into the market. Now what happens to our sellers? And mm -hmm. that is what this is all predicated on, which is why we will continue to fight. We want to take care of those consumers. And I'm trying to think through if the market fragment, because I thought it was very interesting. So Redfin has now pulled out of NAR, if I'm not mistaken. In order to settle their suits, Remax and Realogy, now that's anywhere, are not going to require agents to be members of NAR going forward. So will this, you know, does this mean that listings will still be funneled through MLS and we'll all have to use realtors and so forth? Or does this mean that now it could be almost more like the rental market where there might be internet listings that anybody can can uh, come upon. I, have we have we fully seen the implications of all of these changes yet? Well, we've watched over all of these years as our markets have progressed and our markets have matured, I will say. So let's talk about the MLS. That is the vehicle by which all of us as brokers share information, which is good for the consumer. That way they don't have to be disenfranchised. It's not fragmented. They don't have to go look here or go look there to see what's there. That MLS is also accurate. A lot of those portals, you know, they're just grabbing data and trying to get the consumer to, to come to them. But at the end of the day, our rules at NAR and with our MLSs make sure that our data is accurate. We're making sure that it's transparent. We're making sure that we have an efficient marketplace so consumers don't have to shotgun it and head to one direction or the other, mm -hmm. but can go to one place. So will the realtor still be valuable? Absolutely. The realtor is there to take all of that information, everything that's out on the Internet, be able to sift through it and put that expertise to it. It's interesting because I, I hear that, you know, the buyers don't need a realtor. They can find their home on the Internet and they can go to the, the seller and they can get it bought. At the end of the day, even just that process of finding that home, right. I can walk in with them and I can say, you qualify for your loan, but the house isn't going to qualify mm -hmm. for the loan. The loans are particular and we can put that expertise to work for them before they go down a path of heartbreak or expensive where they've paid for home inspections, they've paid for an appraisal just to find out that the house doesn't qualify. Right. No, it, so even that one step. Exactly. Yeah. I was, you know, it, for us going through the process, it's an incredibly nerve wracking process as it is, obviously. Um, and this, a lot of people will say, you know, great, this is going to make it cheaper in, in some ways. And, and I think in like, as with many of these moves, it's going to be years before we really know the full effect uh, and how that plays out for people. But Tracy, we appreciate you addressing it. Thanks for coming on today and talking about it. We no, hope to check back you. in with you soon.